watching West Hartford Community Television. Hi, you're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. Go Girl Scouts! For the community, by the community. Hi, I'm Sarah Connor, and you're watching Life and Style with Sarah, the show about things that make life great. Tonight, we're going to be talking about clean food and nourishing not only our bodies, but our minds and our spirits with the goodness of food in its most delicious and natural straight state, straight from the garden. My guest tonight is Terry Walters. She is a certified holistic health counselor and the author of her new book, Clean Food. Welcome, Terry. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Well, it's, it's so great to have you here. I think Maybe the first thing we could do is define what clean food means. Sure. Clean food, as you said, is about eating close to the source. So picking our food from the earth and mm -hmm. eating it with as little processing as possible for maximum health and nutrition. And what happens is when we eat closer to the source, mm -hmm. we're able to access more of the nutrients, or we're able to... Um, absorb those nutrients, utilize them, and digest them so we're not leaving toxic residues behind in our body. Okay, so does that mean it has to be organic? Can it be, you know, non-organic? Or mm -hmm. is it just, you know, locally grown? What what does that mean? You know, there are so many factors that go into it. But okay. if you think of that everything you eat falls on this plane from picked from the source over here or mm -hmm. clean on one side right. and down on the plane to the other where it's highly processed. Yep. And each of the foods we eat falls in a different place on that plane. Okay. So organic and local are all choices that mm -hmm. are going to make your food cleaner. But the okay. idea is not to jump from the highly processed food right. to just clean food. It's to look at what you're eating mm -hmm. and see how we can make it healthier. So some things you might say, you know what, I really like this how it is, but maybe, like I always say, my potato chips. I love my salt and pepper potato mm -hmm. chips. I don't have any you know, plans to let go of them. Right. And yet, if we're eating maybe an instant oatmeal that you add hot water, well, mm -hmm. you can make it cleaner by moving to um, quick cooking oatmeal where you add the seasoning yourself and it takes two minutes to cook. Right. You know? If you're eating, you know, really great, nice oatmeal. Maybe you mm -hmm. want to try oat groats, or maybe you just want to switch to organic. And the okay. same thing's true. If you're eating a salad and you'd like to clean it up, mm -hmm. you, if you're eating that salad that comes pre-packaged, maybe you want to see if there's something that's not packaged um, or something that comes from a local farm. And that would make it fresher, mm -hmm. you know, better quality, right. and again, greater nutritional right. value. So it's not all or nothing. You don't have to be overwhelmed and go into your kitchen and completely empty your cabinets, you know, clean out all of the boxes of stuff and start over. You just pick and choose, baby steps, move along the spectrum where it makes sense for you and your family. Absolutely. Yeah, slow steps. And you mm -hmm. know what? The slower you make changes, the less pressure you put on yourself, the yeah. more you can allow <laughs> yourself to be right. nourished by your food. Right. And the easier transition it is on your wallet, on your mm -hmm. family, on your body, you know, and on your lifestyle. It has right. to fit all of those components. I do think there's an element of, at least for me, and maybe it's just my nature, but if I, you know, you feel guilty about, you hear, you read about things, you read about organic versus not organic, you know, whole foods versus processed foods. And, I, you know, sometimes I tend to put a lot of pressure on myself, like, oh, you know, I have two young children, I, you know, I have a family that I'm feeding, and mm -hmm. should I be doing this? Should I not be doing this? And you're saying, don't necessarily put all of that on yourself just maybe pick a step and work towards that and then maybe there's another step and work towards that absolutely I tell people if your health is something that you're interested in making mm -hmm. a difference with right then pick one new food a week maybe it's from the produce section maybe for the first time you're gonna go to that scary bulk section <laughs> and pick, all the a, bins. <laughs> pick a whole right. grain you pick right. one food a week that means you're cooking something new once a week mm -hmm. some weeks you're gonna love the result other weeks you're not but if you focus Focus on bringing one new whole 
food item in right. per week, at the end of the year, you're going to have a whole new repertoire of healthier foods right. in your diet. And what happens when you do that is, one, it's fun. Mm -hmm. You know, two, you can involve the family. If you involve your children, they're more likely to want to, you know, go on this right. journey, and it'll be um, exciting for them. Right. So they're more likely to taste it with you. Right. And especially if you're very honest about, you know, we're not eating this because we have to. We're going right. to see what we think, and I right. don't know, you know. We'll, we'll choose, see if we we'll like see, it. See how it how it works. Absolutely. I am. Um, Preparing for this and, and speaking with you before taping the show, my daughter loves instant oatmeal. Loves it, loves it, loves it every day. I mean, she she's an instant oatmeal girl, and um, we were talking about it. And I, I don't somehow not in the regular. It, actually, it's minute oats. It's not five minute or twenty minute. And she said, you know, I want to make that. And so she she's into a cooking phase, and she wanted to learn how to do this. And now she doesn't want the instant. She because there's the element of making it herself, mm -hmm. and she chose it. She's, you know, cooking her own. We've moved a little baby step yeah, yeah. <laughs> along the spectrum, and she loves it because she's involved in it. Yeah, which absolutely. I think absolutely. And well. and I think when it comes to teaching children how to eat, it's not about forcing. You know, you mm -hmm. need to have this kale or you need to right. have this rutabaga. Right. It really is just about educating them to make their own choices mm -hmm. and giving them the tools where they can be active in the kitchen and with meal preparation. Because right. otherwise, you know, when someone pushes something on you, our instant reaction is, whoa. Right, you know, especially if it's mom. Back. Pushing it on, there's especially a reason. If this it's isn't going to taste good. <laughs> that's right, that's right. right. But if we are working with them and we're explaining how we're making our own choices, mm -hmm. then we're really just teaching by example. And right. that's ultimately the best way to teach because when they get into that crisis or whatever the situation is where they actually bring consciousness to making the choice, mm -hmm. they're going to access what we've done. Right. Not what we've taught them, but what we've the choices right. we've made ourselves. They'll have the examples sitting mm -hmm. back in their minds. Yep. Well, you have written this fabulous book, Clean Food, and it's gorgeous. It's not Thanks. just useful, but it's beautiful. There's beautiful artwork in here. Um, Talk a little bit about how you set it up because I think it's really interesting um, how it flows and how you have the recipes organized. Mm -hmm. The recipes are organized by season. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea is that if we want to maintain balance with our environment, mm -hmm. then we should be eating what's growing naturally in our environment. Okay. You know, if we all lived in California, which mm -hmm. would be really nice, and we'd yeah. get lots of vitamin D, right. and we'd have lots of fresh produce year round, right, all the it would time. be mm -hmm. very easy to to maintain balance or easier to maintain yes. balance right. but we do not have that luxury here in New England <laughs> no, we don't <laughs> and sometimes where I used to think we had four seasons sometimes I'm not sure how many they are because it's you never know what some you're of them are get. longer or seem longer <laughs> than others <laughs> that's right and so yeah. we really you know in the winter we need foods that are more warming and probably mm -hmm. more complex carbohydrates and mm -hmm. sugars to lift our mood mm -hmm. and in the summer we need foods that are cooling and what happens if if we eat for instance you know a red tomato or some nice mm -hmm. grapes, you know, things that grow in warm weather and we eat them in the cold weather, we get overly cleansed mm -hmm. and we find trouble staying warm. You know? Okay. And right. the same thing's true. We certainly do not crave, you know, soups that have been sitting on the stove for three, four hours in the middle right. of summer. Right. So you the don't. book That's is true. You really so the don't. book is really about the cooking techniques mm -hmm. and the foods to help us maintain balance in those given seasons. Okay. Um, when you said you don't crave, there are certain recipes that I always do in the winter. Mm -hmm. And it's true, you don't ever think about, you know, doing stew mm -hmm. in the summer, generally. Right. You know, you don't, in certain, you know, uh, fresh tomato salads, you mm -hmm. don't think about really in the winter. And right. if you do, the tomatoes might not necessarily, it doesn't taste the same. Right. Well, those it's tomatoes haven't come from the farm down the street. Right. So they're not going right. to taste fresh and juicy like right. our own native tomatoes do. Right. But you know, the interesting thing about that is that when we do eat close to the source, we do notice that our bodies send us signals. This is what I'm craving now. Mm -hmm. And it is just a sign and proof that, you know, the best nutritionist we can access is the one that's already within our bodies. And mm -hmm. if we can kind of clear away the clutter that um, disconnects us from being able to listen, which yeah. is really processed food. Right. And if we can get rid of that, which kind of artificially sustains us and right. eat closer to the source, those messages will be loud and clear as you far as what You start craving the need. things that make you feel better. Mm -hmm. 
Um, there's another aspect of your book that I love is in the back you have it, um, not only do you have the recipes organized by season, but by ingredient. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying new ingredients, you can go and look and say, okay, kale, what, what do I do with kale? Right. You know, I, I joined an um, organic farm share a couple years ago thinking, you know, we'd get closer to the source, it'd be fun to go pick up the food in the summer, it would be seasonal. And we, there was a particular time in the summer that it, there was an incredible amount of the dark leafy greens. <laughs> and my family isn't necessarily dark leafy green eaters, and so I was searching the internet, I was trying to find recipes mm -hmm. of what to do with them. Um, and I think I didn't do a baby step. I went from kind of no dark leafy greens to a big plate of leafy greens. <laughs> right. And my family rebelled. And we have a rabbit. So the rabbit ended up eating a lot of dark leafy <laughs> greens rabbit. that summer. It was a really <laughs> healthy rabbit. But so in the back of your book, you have things organized by those ingredients. That's right. And, and to some point, you know, I think the CSA, the Community Supported Agriculture, mm -hmm. when you're buying a share in a farm, that's a great way to just immerse yourself into it. Because right. you're going to come home with foods that you either have a lot of or you've never seen before yes, you and don't it even know what it is. forces true. you to make those changes. Yeah. But what I you know, like to do is I like to just go to the farm or to the grocery store and see what's local and mm -hmm. what's fresh and when I go to the farm I ask or a farm stand in the summer mm -hmm. I'll ask the farmer what's your what was your favorite thing this week what's, right. growing, really what's growing really well and I buy it whether I know what I'm gonna do with it or not right. and sometimes your farmer is a great person to ask well what do you do with it but right. I like to be able to bring it home and look in the back of the cookbook and look up that one ingredient mm -hmm. and find six recipes right you know and pick so from can... those recipes or and maybe those six recipes just looking at them will give me my own idea and right. you know that's why there are no pictures of food in the cookbook because I don't really. Yeah. That's <laughs> you know, I mean, there are beautiful. There's artwork. There's beautiful artwork. Mm -hmm. Right. There aren't any pictures of the food. No, that's right. No, because you need to make it your own. Yes. And my hope is that the book will not only heal and nourish you, mm -hmm. but that it will inspire you mm -hmm. to move beyond the book. Right. You know, and to, to bring else. your own, you know, tastes and, and ideas to your cooking. Mm -hmm. You should never feel restricted to that you failed if it doesn't look like, you know, the picture in the book. That's true. Well, yeah, I mean, and you aren't necessarily going to be able to present it the way it would have been in a photo shoot. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. It probably doesn't look that way anyway. Right. No, no, that's true. Um, so you have brought a recipe. Yes. To share with us. Yes. Shall we go sure. ahead and do that? Yeah. So we're going to make an Asian coleslaw. Okay. And people often say to me, okay, I'm ready to try one new food a week, but mm -hmm. where do I start? Yes. And it's a little overwhelming. It I can think. be overwhelming. Yeah. And I always tell them to start in the produce section, but if people give me more responsibility for picking the food, I always uh -huh. say, start with something green. Because okay. undoubtedly, that is the one color, and if we're eating all the colors mm -hmm. of the rainbow to maintain balance, that's the one color we all need more of. We need more green. So okay. I brought in some greens, and what I mm -hmm. like about this recipe, we're going to use, this is um, baby bok choy. Okay. And this is growing really well right now locally. Really? So, locally? Yes. Really? Mm -hmm. See, I, I picture farms just sort of still in the hibernation. I know. Well, in They're Connecticut not. now we have greenhouses. Okay. And there's enough sunlight during the day for greens to start coming out. Okay. So these, this is baby bok choy. Okay. And then I'm also going to use some, this is Napa cabbage. So what I recommend okay. to people, if you don't know what to do with these things, this yes. is a great recipe because we can chop these things up mm -hmm. as soon as we get home from the store and put them in a bowl. Okay. And then we can dress them and use them as a salad. Or okay. we can take them and add them to a stir fry with some chicken or oh, stir fry them right. and serve them next to some fish. So we get a lot of uses out of this one right. salad. Right, so you have one chopping session mm -hmm. and then you have maybe a few evenings of Right, so we're going to just... That's great chop this up and this is one green not all can but this is one green that can actually be you know is quite watery and delicious when it's raw it sounds like celery you know, when you chop celery it, and it's it not, actually looks a little like it does look it is not quite as fibrous as celery let's move this over here mm. bok choy is a green that um, we enjoy grilled mm -hmm. and it tastes it's almost um, Kind of popcorny a little bit. Do you think well, the flavor is a little nut, not nutty? You know, I've sure. never grilled it. You've never. It's delicious. So grilled. you'll have to have me over when you okay. do that. Okay. <laughs> I will. I'll do that as soon as our grill is out from under the snow. And then we're just gonna. Now this is the Napa cabbage. This is the Napa. Okay. Now this is not as dark green as some other greens, but is that an indicator that it has less nutrients or not necessarily? It's not always the. 
actual um, intensity of the color isn't a good indicator mm -hmm. because this is, you know, romaine lettuce can be, especially the hearts, can be yes. quite light, but I consider them to be what, you know, what I would call you a do. nutritional heavy hitter. Okay. Yeah, they oh, really that's good to know. Super high in, in minerals and calcium, right. and that's what our dark leafy greens right. give us are those great minerals that alkalinize mm -hmm. the blood. And so you can see with the two cabbages here pretty. that we're getting mm -hmm. quite a variety of green. Yes. Well, and I think when you talk about moving baby steps along the spectrum, visually, at least, um, for, I think for most kids, visually, you know, they tend to, I don't know why, maybe it's just my, <laughs> maybe it's the kids that don't grow up on the dark leafy greens, but mm -hmm. they tend to resist the dark, mm -hmm. dark greens, Yeah. or at least what, uh, my children do. And I think if you can find, sort of slowly move them into the darker greens, because mm -hmm. I don't think my daughter would necessarily consider this super green. No. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And even so you can make nice this option. salad with regular bok choy, which is much larger and mm -hmm. has a real white stem to it white and stem. the dark, dark green leaf. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We're going to, um, you know, again, we want to strive for a rainbow of color on our okay. plates. So that's so, one of your philosophies in the book is to try and incorporate lots of different colors. Right. Okay. So here we have some red pepper and this is just some julienne carrot. Mm -hmm. And here I have some um, snow peas. Snow peas. Oh, and they're. And I've I never seen snow them. peas cut like that before. So what I do, these are the snow peas. Okay. And you know, we just peel off the strings, and okay. I like to line them up. You can see how I do this. Uh huh. Oops. Move this down here. Sure. Sure I line them up, up okay. and I just, you know, almost domino them. All right, so okay. a little fanish. And then we okay. can just go right down oh, and chop them. them. That's a great idea. I've and they take no before. time. And, and they're pretty that way. And really pretty. Yes, very and pretty. And we're just going to try and toss this together. Okay. So now this would be the state where you would put it in the refrigerator, cover it, and if you want to make a salad, you can make a big salad. If you only need part of it for a salad, then put the rest in the fridge undressed. Exactly. And then you can pull it out again. How long exactly. would it last in the fridge? This will probably last, a, well, you know what I might do is I might take a wet paper towel mm -hmm. and just put it in with whatever I'm putting it in and then cover it. Okay. So that there's moisture, moisture in there, okay. but it's not soaking. Right. And it would probably last freshly three or four days. That's great. Yeah. So now I'm going to just add a little bit more color and I'm going to add okay. some sesame seeds. All right. These are ivory sesame seeds, and these are black sesame seeds, which are becoming more and more available now. Okay. Now, are these things that would be in that bulk section, or are these things that... Uh, sesame um, seeds are usually in the bulk section. In bulk, okay. Yep, or you can find them over by, you know, packaged nuts and seeds also. Okay. And then we're going to make a real quick and easy dressing. And again, right. we can dress this on the salad, or we could okay. just start this as a saute with a little bit of olive oil okay. and add this right at the end. All right. Okay. All right. So we're going to take some fresh ginger and you want your ginger to be nice and smooth and firm. Okay. And this is an organic ginger root, so I'm just going to grate the whole thing. Now, I've always had a hard time. You're making this look very easy. Every time I try and grate ginger it's or chop it, it gets kind of stringy and, and it's a little difficult. What is your trick? Um, or is there not, or is I'm just not, not pushing hard enough? I'm not <laughs> sure there's a trick, but if you need to have a nice good grater. Okay. And then you end up with this kind of yucky edge yes. here. And you put it in the refrigerator and the whole thing gets yucky and you take it out and you don't mm -hmm. want it. So what I do is I chop that edge off. Okay. So it's and nice, and, nice clean. and clean. Again. All right. And I put it in a wax bag. Okay. And then I actually put it, sometimes if I'm going to use it immediately, mm -hmm. I put it in the refrigerator, you know, okay. within a few days. Right. If I'm not, I'll put it in that bag and I'll put it in the freezer. And that sustains it, right. it and it, it does, you know, really well. And when you take it uh -huh. out and you grate it, it becomes quite powdery. So if you want okay. it to be a little bit Moisture. You know, thick like this, mm -hmm. just let it defrost for about three or four minutes and then grate Interesting. it. Interesting. Okay. I didn't know you could freeze. I would have imagined it would turn black in the freezer. So That's now good to here know. we have this nice cleansing salad. It's yes. nice and lots raw. Lots of greens. Okay, but it's still a little fresh. cold out. Right. So we're going to, the ginger brings heat to this dish. Okay, it makes it warmer. And that makes it and a little it bit warmer. It delicious. I can smell it over here. It's really So we're going to add good. some olive oil. Okay. We're keeping it very simple today. And this is an umeboshi plum vinegar. Okay. And this is a bit of a digestive aid. It's kind of All a right. sweet and sour vinegar. We're going to add just a little of that. So sweet from the plum. Sweet from the plum. Mm -hmm. It's a fermented plum. Okay. And then we're going to add some toasted sesame oil. 
Now you could add a little bit of miso paste to this for an even greater Feeling. cleansing. Okay. You could add some tamari. What is miso? Miso is fermented soybean and fermented it's a soybean. living okay. soybean. So it actually, when we eat miso, mm -hmm. it's, it's high in sodium, so it's not for everybody. Okay. But in medicinal quantities, it's a great way to replenish really? intestinal flora and really cleanse and pull toxins hmm. from the body. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. And where, now where, if you went to the store to find miso, where would you, what section would it be in? It would be in the refrigerated section. Refrigerated section, okay. So we're just going to do a little drizzle over this. Mm, it smells so good. And that was so simple. So simple. I mean, a little bit of, of it was chopped ahead of time, but really mm -hmm. not much. It's wonderful. Let me just try and toss this together. And you can see it just makes such a nice presentation. Mm -hmm. And it is a rainbow of colors. It is. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. Yep. There we go. That's wonderful. Thanks. You want to taste? Great. Sure. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> so the rainbow of colors is one of the things you talk about. There's a list in your book. I actually marked it because I love it. I feel like it's sort of the takeaways that are in the front. One is all the rainbows of the color of all the colors of the rainbow. All five tastes. What do you mean by all five tastes? Well, let me before I talk about all five tastes say okay. that. If we had a nice strip of grilled salmon with the orange on top okay. of this, that's a whole meal. Right wow. there. And, all you have and to it's do, beautiful. And it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that your food nourish all of your senses. Right. Okay. So visually it needs to be peeling. It smells absolutely delicious. <laughs> there you go. Thank so you. the five tastes are sweet, okay. sour, salty, bitter, and pungent. And pungent is not, pungent is hot, like the ginger is pungent, but it also can mm. be just that which creates heat. And that heat is right here in our digestive tract. So what would so, another example of pungent be? Ginger? Cinnamon. Cinnamon, okay. Cinnamon is pungent, cumin really is good. pungent, and of course, hot pepper is pungent. So it okay. can be heat. So, okay. Mm -hmm. But you know, the most important thing, and I tell people, um, I, I just spoke this weekend at a conference, mm -hmm. and the greatest part of it was that right. the first thing I had people do was write down their intention, what they wanted to get out of the conference. Okay. And when we shared that, what was so great about it was that really the most important thing to improving your health mm -hmm. is having the intention to do it. Right. So purposefully, purposefully choosing that's your right. path. And if you have that intention, mm -hmm. you can then apply it, whether it's taking a deep breath when you go into the grocery store and saying, <laughs> I'm only going to buy the foods that nourish me so that right. you don't have them, you know, they are choices in, in your closet, in your cabinet every right. time you open that door. Right. And same with children's. You know, mm -hmm. how great would it be if we could say, yeah, you can eat for a snack anything in this house. You know, that's a good hint. <laughs> because then it's, they, you know, you don't have to say, no, you can't have that. No, you can't have that. Right. No, you can't have that. You can say, it's just pick. Yeah. And, so yeah, in my that's home, a great idea. the kids can have anything they want. And mm -hmm. so instead of trying to manage them and say, well, I'd like you to have this, right. I just say, absolutely help yourself whatever you want. Right. Just think about what colors you've eaten today so that we're making right. sure we have everything. So the rainbow works so well. So that if there's no mm -hmm. negative, it's just positive. Mm -hmm. Which I know. think, I mean, that's, that's I'm going to mentally store that in my mind. Mm -hmm. So a varied diet. A very Is that diet. Colors or Yeah, and people I find get into, you know, one food, oh miso is so great, mm -hmm. or I'm gonna eat these dark leafy greens. And then really the most more important than getting into one food right. is having as much variety as you variety. can. Okay. Yeah. Variety with whole grains. Mm -hmm. So if you eat brown rice and that's your favorite, yeah. try quinoa, try mm -hmm. some millet, try something, something new. different. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as much green variety and root mm -hmm. veggies, you know, vegetables. There's a whole kingdom of vegetables. The fact that we say it's one category, it could be five or six different categories. Right. So Within get out that, there and right. get as much variety Just as try, you can. Try new yep. things. I think yep. that's great. For more nutritional value. I love the last one, and this I think goes to that sort of guilt, pressure, the enjoy your food and mealtime. Mm -hmm. So I love that because you don't, whatever it is you're choosing, yeah, Enjoy it. make peace with it and mm -hmm. let it nourish you, whether it nourishes your metabolism right. or something emotional, like chocolate nur clearly nourishes something. Yes. You know, we're making that choice <laughs> for a reason. Yes, <laughs> right. right. Well, so, and there are studies that it's good for you, absolutely. depending on the chocolate you yeah. pick. But yeah. no, that's, that's great. You know, our food's meant to be shared. Mm -hmm. And that's where we get the nourishment. 
It's right. from sharing, from sitting down, from taking our time, from smelling it, mm -hmm. from the visual. Yeah. So it's the whole package. Right. Yeah. So the spectrum, the colors of the rainbow, small changes, mm -hmm. intention. intention. Do it intentionally. Yeah. And let it nourish you. And let it nourish you. I think that's great. And this was delicious. It is delicious. I'm going to finish this when we're done. I'll um, join you. <laughs> we'll share Perfect. it together. We'll share it. Right. We will have a, we will have a, a little uh, nourishing um, salad. So um, if you want more information about what we were talking about today, you can go at the end of the show. There will be a your website. Mm -hmm. It's terrywalters.net, right? Exactly. Right. terrywalters.net right. or just eatclean.info. Eatclean.info. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you have any questions or, you know, want to uh, learn a little bit more, mm -hmm. it's a great, a great resource. Yes. Um, and go Thanks. to the grocery store and try something new. Um, Pick another color of the rainbow. Pick another. <laughs> Pick another color of the rainbow and do baby steps. Move yourself along the spectrum. Um, I'm Sarah Connor. You've been watching Life and Style with Sarah. I want to thank Terry for joining me. This has been really, really great. Um, hopefully, you're inspired to to take the next step along our uh, journey of nourishing our bodies and our minds and our souls. And until next month. Uh, take some time out in your life to do those things that are make your life fun and great, and we'll see you then. Thanks so much for watching. Good night.